Anyway, Jake is back now. Hello. Fucking hell, it's been long. What happened when one cannibal arrived late to the dinner party? Uh, what? Oh, they, they ate past eight. The others gave him the cold shoulder. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Have you missed these jokes? No. Oh, okay. Um, right, so, leave us comments, because we usually read them out at the end. Um, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Genesis of Androzani. There are tiers there where you can access um, 12 to 24 hours early content, as well as the master tier where you get to request us a video to do. And we will be adding more content to that at some point mm -hmm. when we get the time. The last time we filmed was before we even had a Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Before I was discussing it. I was, I was, we were talking about it. That's yeah. how long ago it was. Yeah, fucking. Oh, also, new room. Yeah, and, oh yeah, sorry, we're, in, we're in a new room because things happen. Um, and you've also been to Germany, and we've watched all of Series 11 and reviewed classic stories. Oh, wow. In between that time. Um, I didn't even know and that. And also comic books, and also Big Finish. Yeah, we've done a lot. And a whole bunch of, like, lists, like, top tens, bottom tens, everything. It's crazy. The channel's, like, evolved so much, but you're yeah, back now. I am. So back for some saying. OG stuff. Anyway, um... Also, we have a Twitter. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? And it's because I've been in contact with other Hootubers. Oh, yeah. So there's... Oh, it's called Hootubers now. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit... It's been like... Funny play on words. I'll, yeah. I'll keep that one. I'll yeah. keep that one questionable. <laughs> yeah, so... um, But yeah, I've been in contact with some and there may be some crossovers happening. We'll see. Um, oh, nice. Right, so... It's been about five months since you saw part one of this story, Rise of the Cybermen. Yeah. And I remember they were stuck in a field with some Cybermen. Yeah. Well, remember. Um, them. So from what I remember, your opinion on this story was a lot... Well, not massively, but it was lower than mine. Yeah. Um, I gave it a nine, you gave it a seven. Yeah. And you said that you loved the Mickey stuff, but you weren't impressed yeah. with the story overall. Wasn't... I, from what I remember is that Mickey had like a double because yeah. it's like yeah. a, they went to a parallel world. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said that you found the Cybermen less threatening than the Slitheen. Yeah, <laughs> which is very unpopular. But then again, you did love the Slitheen, so yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Haters gonna hate. Yeah, because <laughs> like if you look up like top ten and bottom ten Doctor Who monsters online yeah you'd probably see the side men like always second or third yeah and you almost would always see the slithian in the bottom 10 they're just a bit janky eh? like i mean i mean obviously they look good and all that but it just they just feel real janky and funny and you, cartoonish you said they were very rigid yeah yeah mm, that's a fair statement yeah but i think i think that's because the tone of the story is sort of comic book yeah. in a way true yeah. <laughs> it seems I have crashed the party. <laughs> I, can I don't even remember what Chinese that was. fireball. Oh right. Yeah, that was great. Anyway, um, yeah. So we'll see if you can enjoy part two, having not seen the fucking story in five months. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting. It'd be really interesting. I'm I'm excited. Yes. So let's begin. That's good. Oh my fucking god. He even smells like me. <laughs> that guy looks like a 90s boy band singer. Oh, I've missed this. It's so aesthetically pleasing. It's like the simplest title sequence ever, but it's so pleasing to watch. It just slides right in. Oh, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Bullshit. Well, it's just a. It's the one thing that I hate about this story. Stop, stop yelling. Yeah, sorry. What's what? What are those things in plots called? Like red herrings or something? Uh, well, no, red herring is like a. We're supposed to believe that one thing is something in the. Ah, oh, right. Pull the rug, but, uh, what would you call that? Just like some stupid. Um, 
shit, there is a... Mm, it's not really that, though. It's more... It's a device. It, it's more an anti-convenience because it's stopping them from getting away for a certain period of time. Mm. It's like... Yes, there, it's there an is, obstacle. There, there is a writing term for it. There's an obstacle, I'm just, yeah. I'm just blanking on what it's called. Yeah, it's Scooby-Doo on the parallel universe. <laughs> I wonder what that looks yeah. like. Well, I think the Tenth Doctor's the closest the Doctor's ever been to Scooby Doo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the difference between um, Alter Mickey and Normal Mickey is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Their faces. <laughs> one's like, mm. and the other one's like. Mm. Yeah, it's very um, like Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Almost. You know, like that that picture of the masks. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You heartless bastard. <laughs> It's just pretty funny. Mm. So they've turned on a, their master now. Mm. But I don't think they've really turned on him. They're just, they're just doing they're what just, he yeah. programmed yeah, them to true, do. Yeah, true, true. It's not, yeah. Aw. Oh, poor 1990s Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Uh, no. Pink Floyd. Animals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love how he's wearing Converse with a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? I'm here. Didn't you know that was you? I forgot. That must have been confusing. Looking good, Jake. <laughs> oh, that dude looks like a douchebag. <laughs> Sorry. I like how they kind of make this feel like a finale. Mm. Like, if that was Christopher Eccleston, it could, like if he didn't regenerate, yeah. it, it could. This could be the finale. Yeah, of yeah, one. yeah, definitely. I mean, it is a coolant tunnel for a reason. Oh, well. It's very claustrophobic. Yeah, I was just about to say, I like how claustrophobic it is. It's, if they wake up, they're dead. Like. Yeah. I don't think I could do that. What do? I couldn't take that risk. Walking no. right into it. Yeah. Especially when they're right there yeah. and not showing any signs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, smell my vial. <laughs> what do you reckon's in the vial? Is it like, um, grimy Renard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, RuneScape jokes. It's the same shot again. They're just playing, just using the same yeah, just shot. just cutting it up a bit, yeah. <laughs> Only we would know this. This, this, like, this scene feels like we're walking in a maze, just around yes. in a circle. Yeah. Have you done the... A hundred door thing down on RJ Square? Yeah, I did do that. It's, it's like that. Yeah. You know there's an escape room coming in England with Cybermen? Oh, interesting. Bye bye. Rough. Love that. Mm, it's like Darth Vader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, great. Great comeback. It's like when you have to put your cat or dog down.
Who wrote this story? Tom McRae. He's bloodthirsty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so jolly. Yeah. Mm. It's funny, and in the parallel world, technology advanced, but culture stayed behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he still in a fucking... <laughs> You'd think, with the point of him getting an upgrade, is that he could like walk. a fucking walk. <laughs> Bloody hell, just make him fly. <laughs> Jesus. They're so excited, but they've just, like, killed all these people, pretty much. Mm-hmm. They've murdered them. Because they've just realised what they are. Yeah. Jesus. That's pretty cool. Mm. <laughs> Exploded in his own mess. <laughs> the one thing that runs it is that sound effect. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sound effect. It sounds like a lightsaber being yeah. pulled out. You can't say that. <laughs> just, just don't touch the baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two chances to get a dad back and she, neither one worked. Yeah. Well, this one, he's not her dad. That's so true. It's no, like, true. his reaction is feasible. Yeah. He's like, oh, fuck no, I don't want a daughter. <laughs> I'm out of here. Well, you yeah, fucked that one up already. You <laughs> abandoned him like six times. You know what's strange? I remember this scene, but like mirrored, like in the. Mm. the that's weird. It's funny because this is a parallel universe. Yeah. The, so that's bizarre. Yeah. Like I'm watching. Fun. I'm watching Mickey. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably one of my least favorite pieces of my door music. What, the rose theme? Mm. You said you liked it. I do, but when it's used in scenes like this, for this long, it gets right. a bit repetitive. Right, and okay. Whereas there are some where I can listen to it over and over again without it getting on my nerves. Well, Ricky was the Mickey that Mickey's always wanted to be. Mm. Yeah. I want to save the universe with a big yellow truck. <laughs> 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 oh. He's just the best. All right? Yes. Jake, what was, or what is, your initial reaction to the Age of Steel? I think it was... Okay, I, I mean... Obviously, it's, it's a two-parter, so the second part's normally going to be more um, uh, captivating. Not necessarily all the time. It's going to be but a different kind of episode. It's going to have it's going to have more uh, action. Action, yeah. Well, it's going to have a resolution for starters, and not a cliffhanger, which is always nice. Um, yeah, I, I liked it. I did like it. Um, it's a good reintroduction back into watching this. Um, definitely got to see <coughs> the size of characters that I'm used to and um i thought it was good it's a pretty solid story very simple but made sense you know you got your antagonist and your protagonist and the protagonist beat the antagonist and stop his evil plan yeah all right um before we go into characters do you want to add anything or uh, basically echoing your sentiments it's it's a very well crafted story it's very well paced but it is, you mentioned it's kind of comic booky in terms of the most mm. generic kind of yeah. hero, villain, drones yeah, exactly. kind of story. Yeah. It's still a very entertaining one because the characters are yeah. well written, but it's, it's... It's it's a standard fare, but 
there are things about it that make it more interesting than what it would be. It's got some like Mission Impossible I vibes think, and yeah. stuff like I that. I think the pre-established show has made this episode a lot more interesting oh, than what yes. it would be. Not just the the Cybermen, but also the characters. Yeah. So which we will get into. What did you think of the Doctor in this episode? I feel like <clears throat> um, whilst he had his his moments of you know fucking vaporizing the Cybermen and <laughs> and letting mickey know his his master plan of not master plan but his plan of him texting the the yeah. code to destroy everything yeah. um those are some good moments but overall i mean i think he wasn't like the the strongest character in it no it was definitely i think i mentioned this in part one uh he has great moments in this story yeah but, but it's not his story but his personality aside from the end is fairly nondescript yeah this is one of Tennant's least <clears throat> memorable performances in terms of his personality except for the last scene i think i feel like this this yeah. this story was written for mickey though like it was yeah. like well, it's, his, it's his farewell yeah and it, it was yeah. like it was like yeah. the writer got commissioned to be like hey write a fucking cool story about mickey leaving all yeah. right sweet but before we get into that we have to address the david Tennant cocaine meter yeah what options do i have again so obviously there's um sober yeah um sniffing scarface and fear her yeah he was sort of like bouncing between sniffs and and sober I yeah he just had a I little, think, little top up every I now think and he again almost, he was getting he was getting up there like near the end when he was like oh yes yeah oh yes and like doing the My whole favorite button send yeah <laughs> yeah but for most of it he was fairly sober i'd say yeah like i said very nondescript yeah sort of i wouldn't say generic but he's just sort of he's not really the main as you said not really the main character no so his energy levels aren't too high no um but i don't really have any complaints yeah you know it's no. nothing negative it's just I nothing mean, i mean i mean no matter how he's written david Tennant always adds this sort of flair to his to the character yeah, of his performance yeah. um when it's needed when it's needed yeah my issues with the tenth Doctor in, in episodes where he's not so great is never really the actor. Yeah, no. it's always <laughs> the writing. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think that's the case with most of the Doctors. As yeah, well. yeah. To be honest, yeah. There's only a couple of instances where the actor is lackluster. Yeah. Um, because most the, the casting on this show for the the main character has been fantastic since mm. day one. Um, yeah. Rose Tyler. Um very uh <laughs> just like i don't know Bear? yeah and not really and just being annoying at points mm-hmm. um but yeah she wasn't really that big a part of the story she was more just a bystander that was trying to help out yeah and then be like i want my dad back too yeah she was uh i find in this story she's got a very I, I always have very confused feelings. She's on such a selfish character, though. I know it's it's hard it's hard because she had in this story she's with Pete and Mickey, and there's this whole pre-established story that was set up in series one. Yeah, that was so brilliant. So now that her character has changed, it feels strange for her to go back to that. Yeah, it's like exactly. It, it feels like she, yeah. she she should be stronger because she's gone through so much already. Yeah. But she's fallen back into this like yeah. naive selfishness. But because selfish. she, she she sort of she peaked in Bad Wolf and Parting of the Ways. Yeah. Because mm. like it was almost like the moment she matured was when she was on um, the game show, the the weakest link. Yeah. yeah. And then she saw that guy get vaporized and she switched it on. Yeah. And from then to the end of series one and even into the Christmas Invasion, yeah. she's really good. Yeah. And in this series, they've just kind of made her a bit she's closer to a teenager yeah it's th- almost like she's devolved a bit yeah um which i don't necessarily dislike because i like i i find it interesting it's just because you've got that character in this story where it's playing off things that happened in the previous series it feels weird yeah mm. it's almost like the wrong character is in the wrong story yeah it's bizarre um because at points where i'm like i can relate to what you how you feel rose yeah. but then at other points i'm like I also don't like you. <laughs> yeah. 
It's yeah, yeah. I know. It's 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 a really muddy feeling. I think it's because Billy Piper is an immensely charismatic actress, yeah. so we like Billy Piper. But Rose is often written in this particular few episodes of series two so far. It's quite a messy and like judgmental kind of yeah. character. She yeah. feels quite. Um, yeah, because yeah. I was because I was going to mention this when we get to series two recap, but I think I'll say it now because we've had so many stories. I think I can say it. So. I've got this very strange feeling that when they went for the sort of production meetings in series two, I think Russell had this outline in his head of what he, where he wanted to take Rose's character. Yeah. And I feel like each of the writers has had a different response to that. Yeah. Because episode to episode, she feels so different. Yeah. And it's like in, in Russell's one, it's, it's more subtext. Whereas in stuff like school reunion, like it's, and, um, and this one, because it's not a different writer, I feel like they have taken what Russell has said and changed it into something a bit like it's not subtext. It's mm. very like they've made the the change that they, that Russell wanted to do. They've made that her entire character. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's almost almost caricatured, mm. and it's frustrating because <clears throat> I feel like if there was a bit more um, communication as to what her character is meant to be in this series, I feel like it would have been more consistent. Um, so I almost feel like it's, yeah, the, her, the problem with her in this episode is mainly to do with the series as a whole, not really the yeah. episode. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to say about Rose? No. No? Okay. What did you think of Mickey and Ricky? Um, well, Rick, Ricky was sort of... Ricky was just like a... What, Ricky was just like an idea, you know. It was like it was like the manifestation of Mickey's wants of who he wants yes, to be. Yes. So, <clears throat> Ricky was really Mickey all along. That's that's the whole idea of the story. It's. I mean, where he ends off, he literally is taking yeah. the role of Ricky. Yeah. Like you already, I could already sort of tell when we first started watching part one that well, Ricky's going to be gone. And Mickey's going to become Ricky, yeah. and like, it it had all been set up for that, but. In a way, I think it it is good because Mickey, Mickey's character was always put down as a, the idiot, as you know, yeah. the doctor calls him. Yeah. Whereas he's not; he's a f- real smart yeah. dude. I think. I think in contrast to Rose, I think from episode yeah, he's one, grown. Now, his his arc is so consistent, so yeah. well put together. And it's always it's also been quite subtle in the background. Yeah, yeah. but I yeah, like yeah. Th- like I love because like along the way we've had these episodes that he's appeared in, and he's had he's had these small scenes that have just they just they tick away in your brain like mm. um like in school reunion when he's sitting in the car with k9 and he's been compared to k9 as the yeah. 10 dog and it's like it's it's scenes like that that lead up to this episode that make his character so interesting yeah. yes i agree yeah well, i i love him in this yeah. so much it was the sort of logical conclusion to where rose abandoned him at the end of rose yeah and now he's not abandoning her, but he's realized, i got to get out of this. I can't yeah, be yeah. attached to you. I've found a purpose now. Yeah. Yeah. And I've found people who rely on me because now Ricky's dead. I can't put that through my... I can't yeah. make my grandmother go through that. Yeah. So I'm going to take his place yeah. and look after And even her. though it may hurt to leave you now, I think in the long term, it's better for both of us to separate here. Ah, oh, fuck. It should have happened a long time ago, really. Yes. Yeah. No, but that's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. And that's yeah. why it's quite a satisfactory end to his arc. Yeah. It's mm. because it's something that should have happened ages ago, but it's a, which makes it a bigger relief now that it finally has. Yeah. 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 And there's, all, there's almost this sort of subtext with the Doctor where he, in the beginning, obviously, was like very dismissive of Mickey, but he's grown respect for him. Yeah. And he, he kept him around because... He does genuinely care about Mickey under it. He doesn't say it, but it's yeah. like he actually does respect Mickey. I think I think ever since um, World War Three, I think when Mickey saved them from the Slovene, I think ever since then the Doctor's really grown respect for him. Mm. Um, and it's almost there's like a brotherly banter between them. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like yeah, I feel like it was. You can definitely <laughs> see under the Doctor. He actually really, at, at the end of the day, does love Mickey. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think it's quite a, I think it's quite a fitting end mm. for his character arc. Um, what about Pete Tyler? Um, again, sort of just a background character. 
a lot of a lot of the guess i guess a lot of the the idea of why they're going in to save them was to get jackie back but Mm. um i think he was more prevalent in part one yeah yeah well, yeah. it was more of a shock in part one, and now the shock of him being there has worn down. Yeah. We, yeah. They didn't have much to do with his character other than take Jackie away from him and make him yeah. find the perfect like and also Mickey. And also yeah. give him that ultimatum of um, whether he should go with Rose or not. Yeah. And obviously, they made the right decision in the writing of having him not go because it, it would make no sense for someone that has never had a daughter to be like, mm. oh you are technically my daughter but I, I had that bond yeah and it's just like well no I don't want to fucking know you goodbye yeah. yeah yeah yeah. I mean if the episode was longer you probably could have done a bit more with him but there yeah. was so much to get through that whole interaction is real complicated because obviously Rose is looking at him as her father yeah. and like mm. seeing all the memories and shit that she yeah. has with that person yeah. but this dude is like my dog's called your name yeah. So it's like I kind of like how it's sort of like an anti Father's Day. Yeah. Where, because in Father's yeah. Day there was this realization that they were family, but in this one it's like no, you're yeah. not. I don't know who you are. Mm. Yeah, I like how also Pete is quite noble, but he's also quite flawed. Yeah. Mm. He's, a, he's a little bit arrogant at points. He's a little. Yeah. yeah he's, he's very like, different to the Pete from our universe. Yeah. Mm. Very yeah. obviously because it's parallel. Um, it's interesting because Pete in Father's Day was an everyman whereas Pete yeah. here is quite a sort of again like with Mickey Pete in this universe is what Pete in our universe wanted to be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and um, we didn't get much of Jackie but she was converted into a side man mm. thought that was it's quite a if you're if you're very sensitive to like you know characters going through shit it's quite a it's quite a dark thing yeah it's a rough story yeah. yeah yeah to see jackie turn into a side man and be so uniform and non-distinct like she usually is mm. because obviously they looked around and they couldn't find her because all the side men look the same yeah um what did you think of john lumick he's a bad dude <laughs> um yeah, I mean, obviously, there's the stupid fucking him in a chair still as a side man. <laughs> so dumb. But, um, I mean, he's a pretty good bad dude, you know, like, had. He felt like a menacing person, even though he he's, was stuck in a wheelchair. He's definitely a comic book villain. Yeah. There is no subtlety to him at no. all. But no. I find him so enjoyable. Yeah. And I don't, I, I'm not sure if it's just because he's in Harry Potter. And he basically plays like a very not not as not as over the top, but quite a sort of similar character in terms of like personality wise. Mm. I just really enjoy him. Um, you know, he's in Mr. Bean. Really? There's you know the scene where Mr. Bean goes to the restaurant and he hides the meat under everything. No, I he can't. hides under a plate, hides it in like a flower vase, and then he keeps. The, the, there's a guy who keeps bringing him out more meat. Oh, that's him. Oh, really? Yeah, he's like, "Here's your meat, sir." Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's him, and he's wearing like a ponytail. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, well, you'll have to rewatch that at some point. Is that Happy Birthday, Mr. Bean, where he has a little card for himself? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, fucking great. Um, and the Cybermen. Um, <laughs> are you, are you still... I think, I think seeing, seeing them in, like, like, there was definitely, like, it felt like the Terminator almost, but, um, with, like, the whole factory and, sh- and stuff like that. They, I still feel like they're just too rigid and like slow and 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 just not that menacing. I it's, think. I, oh, sorry. No, you no, you, well, because the for you, I'm assuming the idea of them, the fact that they're stripping away everything that makes them human, is an interesting concept. Yeah. That's yeah, but the execution is quite clunky and. I can agree with that, but I have such a nostalgic connection to this yeah. particular um, villain that I just, I, I absolutely adore them. Like, yeah. I, even, even though they're so inefficient and when people are running away, they don't even try to reach out and grab yeah. them. They just, but, um, it's not yeah. too different from the original Cybermen though. It just makes no. it, it just makes it seem like they're going like, uh, like they see the Cybermen and they're just like, oh, they're about 20 meters away. Sweet, we've got about 
four yeah, minutes before I we have to start the running. The problem with that is, is that you're supposed to. So the the I will compare to the classic Cybermen. The thing is with them is that they they're like this inevitable swarm, mm. where it's it's like the White Walkers, right? Not exactly the same, but they will move as slow as they need to, like yeah. as efficiently as they need to, because no matter what happens, they will catch you. Yeah, but you uh, can't run from them. Like, yeah, they but are the, the thing about that is that they're zombies. Yeah. So, but the thing about Cybermen is that they're these like crafted high tech like mechs. Where, yeah, I why think, can't you make them like the most efficient running fucking but the killing p- machine? The thing is, when you do that, you you take away what they are. If you if you just make them robots, then they're not special. Why? Because then they're just robots. But they, but they are robots. Because uh, I think you're specifically talking about the agility of them, like of the. Well, yeah, it just makes them not scary. That they're just so shit at being being scary. You know, like. I mean, obviously, this is this is really just nitpicky, and it doesn't. It's, well, it's not nitpicky. No, no, it's, it's, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. It it just makes no sense to me that you're going to create this this whole army that f- converting people, upgrading humans into these into these robots. Yet they can't even catch a person walking at about three times their speed. Yeah, but the thing it's is... It's not really an upgrade, yeah, really. Yeah, but the thing is, if there was only a few of them, I would agree, but there's not. There's millions of them, and when you convert a certain number, you're going you're gonna to get to the point where there's so many of them that they would surround you, and you'd have nowhere to go. It's closer to, to a disease. No? Yeah. Mm. It's this inevitable storm of reality, and the thing is, they have unlimited time, and you can't... Re- I mean, obviously, they did kill them with the, the numbers, but if you're not the doctor, you can't really get rid of them. So it would be this slow burn yeah. of a of a horrible, you know, and you'd be constantly running away, but you would never be able to escape. Yeah. I just still think it's funny upgrading into a really janky machine. Well, think of, like, the original iPhones and how clunky they are compared to where they are at now. Yeah. And with... Because as the Doctor says, what happens once you reach, like, peak evolution, that's kind of something that I disagree with the Doctor saying is because... They would probably constantly upgrade themselves yeah, yeah. if they would find software and hardware issues. Yeah. So eventually, I think that was more just like in the th- yeah. they, the the sidemen had this this idea of peak evolution. Yeah. That was that's what he was talking yes, about. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. But I do. I I believe had they succeeded, they would eventually mm. have kept continued to upgrade and get better, and that would mm. have made them a more legitimate and terrifying threat. Yeah. And the reason why they're so janky is because it's a new idea mm. for them. Um. Because the Cybermen in Classico are even more shit than that. They're like, but literally... They're, kind of, they're more frightening. Because yeah, they're basically oh yeah. just a corpse under a sheet. <laughs> with some bits of metal attached. Oh yeah. It's really gross. Yeah. Which I think we're going to get to very soon. <laughs> um, but yeah. In- it's interesting how you see the Cybermen that way. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. Because they're such a popular villain. Like... The the side the concept of the Cybermen is is a lot of people would argue but, is maybe even the best concept but, Doctor Who's ever had. But I think it's one of the most brilliant things the show has done in terms of the idea of the Cybermen. Yeah. But it's interesting because coming from your perspective, having not seen the classic show, when you compare the Cybermen, which are the other iconic monster you've heard about, when you compare them to the Dalek and just what one Dalek did in yeah, Dalek, exactly. yeah, exactly. That is a threat. Yeah, just one. But then there's like yeah. fucking twenty of them, and it's like, oh, you know. Yeah, that's interesting. Just gonna go run a hundred meters down the street, and I'll be all yeah. good. Well, that's because the Simon are different to the Daleks, though. No, they are. They are. But yeah. it's just. No, but I'm just trying to. Get yeah, where you're I, Cybermen I, don't work well when there's only one of them. No, I get, I get yeah. what you're saying, and that it's an, it's an inevitable force. Yeah. But I'm saying that. Like, so the idea is that the whole of the Cybermen is a is a threat, but one Cyberman is shit. Like, this dude. Yeah. If you have one Cyberman and like one human, the human's gonna win. Well, unless the you can't stop the Cybermen, and then the ev- Cyberman, eventually the Cybermen would get somebody. Well, just think of what happened to Ricky. And all it took was one Cyberman to wrap his oh, yeah. around his ankle and he got, he got yeah. killed. And as you that saw was a the- really funny scene though and I laughed at that because it just felt you really... sick bastard. It just felt so awkward. It was just like... Ah, ah, I'm 
Oh. And and Mickey's just standing there like, ah, come over the fence. Ah. And then Ricky's like, <laughs> and then it's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, guess I'm out of here. <laughs> I just found it really... You found it melodrama? Oh, sort of, yeah. Interesting. Because I, I cried when I first saw that scene. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> How old were you, though? Ten? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Oh, speaking of that, because a lot of people, like, it's like a cultural like a pop culture thing to talk about how Doctor Who gives children nightmares yeah the only real nightmare I ever had from Doctor Who that I still distinctly remember to this day was after seeing this episode actually I think it was Rise of the Cybermen after the cliffhanger of that Mm. all I could like the dream was I was in a black room I couldn't see anything all the only sense that was working was hearing and all I could hear was the stomping the oh yeah getting closer and closer and closer and closer until it was unbearably loud and then inevitably I'd wake up after that. But that's like the yeah. only nightmare Doctor your Who... Dad, your dad mentioned that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Simon were like, like the freakiest things to me. Mm. It's just funny how we had that experience whereas you watch it and you're not impressed yeah, at all. Yeah, but do you know how old I am compared to how old you were when you saw that? Yeah, but the thing is, the thing is though, if you watch reactions to this on YouTube, people yeah. are scared of them. Really? Yeah. You're just a hipster weirdo. I mean, I guess I've just seen shit. You've just you know? seen some shit, Jake. I've just seen some yeah. shit. Sci-fi doesn't do anything for you. You're just so you're just so tough. You fucking what are you? What are you? You heartless bastard! <laughs> don't not, even cry not, when someone dies. I'm not heartless. I just don't. I just. It was just like awkward. It just felt like. I mean, it, it might have just been the way it was made, like edited and, or something. I don't know. It just felt really awkward to me, and that's well, why. Well, also because at that point, even though you like Mickey, he is still. Even though he's in a dramatic story, he is inherently a bit of a goofy character. Yeah. So when he's looking gormless at his double being killed, and he goes, like... Oh. Well, it wasn't even that. It was just, like, the way... The the whole, like, thing of Ricky dying just seems so forced. And so, like... Sudden? So, yeah, so forced and so sudden. And then it was just like, oh, we'll just forget about that. Right. Well, that, yeah. that didn't really happen. Hey, I'm Mickey. I'm the new Ricky. <laughs> I'm going to fix everything. And then, and then at right. the end of the... Well, the point was, is you were supposed to be sad about which one had died because you didn't know. And then you find out. That was well, the point. I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious it wasn't Mickey that died. You're just too died. smart, Jake. You've got a massive IQ, <laughs> massive brain. And you, 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 can't, you, you can't get invested in this simple shit, can you? No. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I'm watching this to be critical about it for a reason. Of course, of course, of course. But this is why we have you on the channel, because we... You come from an interesting perspective that yeah. you find the Slitheen a more legitimate threat than the Because Cybermen. most people absolutely despise the Slitheen, think they're the stupidest fucking thing ever. <laughs> they, <laughs> like, they literally, some people even don't watch past the Aliens of London because they hate it so much, they think it's disgusting. I might have just liked it better because I found it funny, huh? or something, I don't they know. No, it's, but it's, it's just interesting, it's interesting because this is not an opinion you usually hear. Yeah. So that's yeah. why we're so Because I've, I've heard stories of people that are like, they see Aliens of London, they're like, they see the farting and they're like, fuck that, I'm not ever watching this show ever again. That's <laughs> it's dumb. funny. I know it is, but some people do. And yeah. then like, they'll see the side men and I'm like, holy shit, that's scary. Yeah. It's interesting. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just me and just not finding that kind of thing scary, you know? Like it's not. With, you mentioned, we, are you, with the classic clip, is it going to be one of the side men from the classic series? Yeah. I'm going to be interested to see what you think of those, Simon, because they are quite different. Yeah. yeah. And they are, I think they're much creepier. Yeah. Than the, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Um, so obviously there was, a, um, I can't remember her name, but it was like Mrs. Something with the white hair. Um, the one that saw yes. the, yeah, they got killed. They the whole point of remembering her name. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that was the, and then there was also the 90s Justin Timberlake dude. Jake. Yeah. Jake. That was me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think those are the only other characters that I remember. Yeah. Jake, fucking awesome, like that guy. Um, I I don't actually. I just said that just to be yeah. stupid. Um, well, at least he's not like Adam. <laughs> um, Jake was just, you know. I felt like he was never right. No, it was, it was, it was always Mickey like being like, nope, we'll do it this way. He was a bit of a moody prick, yeah. Yeah. Understandably, because um, his friend died and he was in a horrible circumstance, but he was a bit of... What was the white head chick? Was it I like Bre- Brenda or something? Maybe not. I don't remember. Um, Someone comment and tell us. Yeah. Um, yep, she was pretty good. 
I had a good good chat in the tunnel. And then and then they had, had some like human moments together. And then she died. Yeah, and then she died. I think she was um just a disposable character. I, really. I like her um, chemistry with the doctor. Yes. The only thing, the only thing, I, well, not the only thing. I, I, I like when she was like, the doctor was like, what was that? And she was like, electromagnetic bomb. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, what a sick name. Yeah. 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 She was cool. She was cool. Short lived, but cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. She was kind of like, she kind of played the companion for a little bit in this episode. Mm. Well, because Rose yeah. was off with Pete. So yeah. yeah. And Mickey was off with Jake. So yeah, she was the companion. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so the plot. Um, you kind of discussed it, but do you want to round up your thoughts on the plot? Um, yeah, I I mean, y- the plot was, yeah, just good. It was solid, and um, it was action-y, and had some, had some explosions. Um, what do you think of the, the way it was concluded with the technology? What? You know how, like, they oh. beat the, the Cybermen were emotionally, oh, was... the emotional inhibitor. Oh, yeah was unlocked and then all the side men died from um freaking yeah. out yeah i guess it, it's a pretty good way to end it sort of like it's just sort of a bit like like any movie where it's taken over by technology and you're like we must enter the code to destroy everything independence day <laughs> yeah a whole bunch of other examples matrix sure. and yeah, stuff matri- like that yeah. How, how how does this compare to pushing a big red button and having a rocket blow up the fucking? It's pretty much the same. You in, reckon? In, I think it's more clever. I think it's more clever. It, it's a little bit more clever, but it's also it's. It's such an overused it's, plot it's, ending. It's so. the story issue as well when you have mass drones and armies, yeah. and you need to dispose of them suddenly. Yeah. Or we'll just send out a wave of this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such. It's it's. But, but I think it's better in this one than it usually is because yeah. it's using the technology against it which is against itself yeah. which is the whole yeah. point of the story well it's using it's, it's using human nature to overcome the threat of the Cybermen yeah. but the the thing that makes the difference for me with this is the aftermath of it the fact that the Cybermen actually die and that they feel oh it. yeah yeah that, no, I do I do like that's that that's the difference how it's, it's sort of like it's sort of like a moral uh, like a yeah. moral Weird, where they weird literally had to keep, you... they had to genocide them to get rid of them yeah and they felt but every all, inch of it they're really already dead in a way yeah so it's... yeah but it's almost like it's like when you say for example someone's like on a on a um like a machine right like a like in, in a hospital mm-hmm. and they're and they're they're very unconscious imagine the only way to kill them is to wake them up and then they have to die like 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 just imagine they can't breathe without that machine right mm. so imagine the only way to the only way to kill them because they uh, just say so you have to kill them because yeah, it's but, like they, but, they're yeah. gonna die so imagine the only way to kill them is to remove the machine and no, they, no, okay. they lose no no, air. no, no, no. Um, imagine y- the only way to save a person is by killing that person by pulling that machine yeah. out that's what you yeah, that's, that's what, what you're that's asking. what i mean yeah i mean it's really whether it's worth it like is that is that person's life worth this person's life? In this case, it is because these humans that are still human are a life that can be recreated and reproduce and and carry on humanity. These Cybermen are dead. They can't they can't reproduce. They can't do anything. Yeah. There's no they're disposable humans at that point. Yeah. They're not really human anymore. Yeah, but it's and it's, and it's, and it's it, yeah you're right. And also because the numbers as well. Because I believe. Had the Cybermen taken over all of Europe and said all of America and blah blah blah, blah and like there was like a handful of rebels left, yeah, the Doctor probably would have thought it was a lost cause. Yeah, he would probably just take those people and take them to somewhere else. Where yeah, they exactly. Fly away from the Cybermen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Anything else you want to say about the plot? No. Nah. No. Nah? Okay. Well, time to get to a classic clip. Yep. So. We're going to be watching Cybermen Break Out of the Tomb from Tomb of the Cybermen.
Oh, these are just creepy. Hmm? These are just creepy. Oh, yeah. Right. So, how was that? It's cool. Um, I think I like them better than these side men. Yeah. Um, the reason why is I think they're more mysterious. But also, I haven't watched that whole story. And from what I gathered is that they're already a race. Like, this, and they This wasn't their first story, no. And it's... I think that, to me, is scarier than them being recycled humans. For they some are. reason. They are recycled humans. Well, the fact that, that we're not watching them being, like, becoming Cybermen. This they just are later, yeah, there. Yes. Right, it's already happened. They've yeah. evolved to the point where it's not trying to become a new species. Yeah. They are a new species. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because they... It's basically they froze themselves... Um, and this is them being unfrozen. Yeah. 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 And it's, and I also just, the music in it oh, sounds yeah. awesome. Oh yeah. And just, and also the way they move, the way they're, they're yeah. quite limited in their movement, but it's very, it's the sort of unnatural sort of silky yeah. way they move. Yeah. Yeah. But same principle. They don't move fast. They move very, even slower actually. Hmm. I don't know what the threat is, though, and I don't know why, like... Well, the threat is being converted into a Cyberman. Yeah, but, see, I don't think you understand what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to what say. What are you trying to say? So, I'm not saying that they're not scary because they don't move fast or anything. I'm saying that they're not scary because they don't seem that menacing. Because the fact of the matter is that if you're going to upgrade a human... What's the point of upgrading into something that can just ultimately be destroyed by a human? That, it's just like... But they can't be destroyed by a human. They just were. We just watched them get destroyed by a human. No. No. That's different. We, 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 you mean in Age of Steel? Yeah. They were... So, their emotional inhibitor in this new Cyberman doesn't exist in these old ones. And it's... What? It's... (laughs) You, it, they they unleashed what makes them human in in Age of Steel. So remember when the Doctor had that open, yeah, yeah. open chest and there was that little chip there? Yeah. And that one woke yeah, up. Yeah, okay, well, okay, let's go back to what I was saying before yes. then. And, and the fact that I find these ones creepier. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah. Absolutely. And because I reckon... Well, I mean, I, I haven't watched the whole thing, so I don't really know much about it, but... They just seem creepier, just simply because of the fact that they're now evolved or they're 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 more uh, probably advanced. Well, that yeah. they just they they're probably smarter in a way. Or, mm. or well, well and the, the, that serial is called Tomb of the Cybermen, mm. which means they've been around for a long time. They've they've been dormant. They've now this. The, I can't remember the exact context of how they were. F- put there yeah but the reason is they've been put there and hidden away for a reason mm. and this arrogant businessman has come in and been like no i'm going to resurrect them and they mm. will let me live mm. which obviously is a bad idea because they're not yeah and then he just he lets these this ancient threat out and that inherently i think is a much more something that is more unknown is far yeah. more interesting than something yeah. that we know the exact process yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't disagree. Yeah. I think I definitely think Tomb of the Cybermen is a far better story than this. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think that that necessarily makes Age of Steel redundant either. But that's I don't I don't think Jake's saying that. I'm not that saying that. It's redundant, but in in Age of Steel by itself. Yeah. In terms of the Cybermen, not just the slow movement. But yeah. the fact that they have that that um, the exploit. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fact that right. they like because these other ones, like, they they're different. They're more alien than yeah than this. Whereas this one is, it seems like it's based on Earth technology, which means like humans, which means humans are more able to corrupt it. Mm. And humans are more able yeah. to get in there. They're more stoppable. Yes. Okay. They are quite a stoppable threat. Yeah. Like, exactly. If you were if you walked into a room. And there was you and a Slovene. Yeah, what you, the fuck? You don't know what the hell to do. No, yeah. It's just a massive thing that's just, just like, I'm going to... If you just stood upright and were quiet and said, I submit, 
Yeah. And then run away before he can get to you. Exactly. And then you've got. But at some point they would get to you. At some point, because there's so many of them, and it's honestly like a numbers multiplying. You can't run forever. You you will get caught and converted. And it will be a slow and painful death. As opposed to a Slitheen, which will hurt, but it will kill, kill you within minutes. Yeah, the thing is, I love the Cybermen. They're my favourite yeah. Doctor Who monsters. But just trying to get what J- where Jake's coming from with this, which is that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Jake, but the fact that the Cybermen singularly and even as a big entity the fact that there are so like there's this group of renegades that haven't been converted and just a small group of people are able to stop yeah. this world changing event makes right. them seem less threatening than than the Dalek which wiped out a whole warehouse yeah. okay. by itself. would so obviously we saw Jackie converted if one of the main characters like Rose or Mickey or even the Doctor was converted into a Cyberman, would that make them more threatening to you? No. No? No. Why not? Because it's still they're all the same. Once it's a Cyberman, it's the same as the other Cybermen. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is is like the threat that they can kill the characters. I already know you, you already know they can kill characters. Yeah. So What do you what do you mean? Well isn't isn't What that, are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that, that having a character that is closer to the plot oh, I'm just asking you if I'm asking what would make them more threatening to you nothing nothing if they were better you know well, if better if, in what way what if, you mean if they were more upgraded yeah if they were just more more like like y- y- less of an entity force and more of a singular force right but the you said the two and the Cybermen ones were better but they aren't a singular force at all yeah I don't know that though he said he said they were creepier Right, yeah, no, because... I don't are. necessarily say they're better, but also I've never watched that before, so I don't really know much about it. I might have a different Just based opinion. Just a 30-second clip right, yeah. yeah. to a whole okay. two-hour story. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I kind of get where you... Like, I disagree because I love the yeah. segment, but I can kind of see where you're coming from. Yeah, they don't have an instant sort of attack. No. You know, they don't have, like, a big gun, you know. It's not like if they're gonna you electric- the new ones can electrocute you, but they have to get you to it first. It's not like if you walk into a room with one, that means you are dead. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas with a Dalek, that's what would happen. Gone. Yeah. True. That's true. But my argument against that would be that it's more of a slow burn, and I would rather be killed straight away than be converted. The Cybermen can make for more creative stories because there is more you can do with them. Yeah. But the Daleks are probably a more immediate. And bigger threat. Yes. Yeah. But they um, probably would agree. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Love, I love digging away yeah. at your, your, <laughs> your mind, because a lot of people that I know would n- have gone nowhere near as deep as this, because my a lot of my friends just like them because they're cool. Yeah. That's, the, that's all they say. You know. Um. I right. Have, yeah, I have a friend who, who um rewatched. Well, actually, watched Doctor Who for the first time a few years back, yeah. and like he was texting me as each episode came out, and he loved the Daleks. But when he got to the Cybermen, he's like, "Holy shit, yeah. those are so cool!" And yeah. then he went to this like, because he's a writer, so he like loves yeah. picking these things apart. He went through this long, long, long spiel about why he fucking loved the Cybermen, yeah. and how he thought they were so personally threatening. Mm. Right, historical and reception time. This episode is relatively popular, but maintains the same fan opinion of as Rise of the Cybermen. Um, Mickey's independence is praised. Some note that this is a popcorn episode, and say the Cybermen were let down and by the book. Oh, yeah. It's it's got a, it's got quite a mixed. The story is quite a mixed reaction, really. Um, mm. Not necessarily pertaining to different fan groups it's all around a very divisive one yeah um and i think there are a lot of classic who fans that don't like it no. just because it changes the whole nature of the side men you know yeah um but my argument against that is that this is not the same really the same thing it's a parallel version of the side men it's, and it's an alternate origin yeah and it's more but it's more based around technology which is more of like a 21st century thing mm. Um, yeah, 
it's it's almost like they're a completely different villain in some ways but the same in others some say the story is jarring because graham harper's direction is so imaginative and atmospheric yet the characters are over the top and two-dimensional mm. yeah yeah it it looks really good and it like and it everything about it was like aesthetically pleasing but yeah de- definitely i would agree that um a lot of the plot and character progression is very linear yeah yeah it, it's um it's interesting because yeah because graham harp is quite an experimental director whereas this story was very comic book yeah it's very by the, by the numbers mm. yeah it, it's a strange blend but i like it um we might as well talk about it now. Is there anything else you want to say about direction? Um, because mm. I think it's brilliant, honestly. Yeah. I love it so much. I love the cold aesthetic. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it's called Age of Steel, it looks like it's like at like eight degrees Celsius the whole yeah. episode. Yeah. It's really cool. I love the scene in the the tunnel. Yeah, there's some beautiful shots and like beautiful setups and everything. Um. I wish um I wish um Ricky was less like fucking cold and like typical badass yeah. guy like had a little yeah. bit more a little bit more Mickey to him and you, you know yeah. what would have been cool is if I mean this is more writing than directing but if Ricky and Mickey had a bit more screen time together and there was a moment we learned where Ricky got gets tired of running yeah. and sometimes just wishes I just wish I was an ordinary Joe. Yeah. Just walked that whole that whole um exchange between Ricky and Mickey where they're like Ricky's like, Alright, you're pretty cool. Yeah. It, it just was just like this is so wank. Like yeah. this could have been done so much better. There's but such a cool idea there. Yeah. Too. Exactly. It's just, I guess it's just a clash of ideas, isn't it? Yeah, well, no, not even that. I think it was just felt very rushed. Like it was almost like an afterthought to the plot to be like, "Hey, we should have these two talk to each other," and and Mickey finally gets some satisfaction from someone and gratification gratification for being. Do you think a, that's a right um, guy? Do you think that's a fault of the forty-five minute format of these episodes? Probably, I would say so. I pro- yeah. I'd probably say so because that's like a whole new. F- thought wave to be going down yeah, because i do remember in the rise of the sidemen review you said that there's so much that this has to cover what did i watch i watched scott pilgrim vs the world the other day and at the end spoilers alert if you haven't watched that movie um have you guys watched it no um really you know you know in the end when um he's fighting he's fighting the guy and yeah. stuff and then his um uh what's it it's called nega nega scott yeah comes yeah, out yeah. and then he's like He's like, don't worry, girls, I'll fight this guy by myself. And then cut to them walking outside, and yeah, they're just yeah, talking yeah. to each other. And they're just like, yeah, that guy's pretty cool. We should just uh, go get a coffee or yeah, something. Yeah, I think yeah, we'll go. Yeah. We'll meet up and have dinner the other day. Yeah. That's fucking cool. That's yeah. brilliant. I love that whole idea. Version, yeah. yeah. So uh, something like that between R- Ricky and Mickey would have been cool. But um, yeah, instead of just the... It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. All right, let's run. <laughs> and then one of them dies. Yeah. Right. So you think it was a bit quick? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it doesn't. It's all good, but it, the idea was there. But I reckon it could have been explored some more. Mm, okay. Um. Obviously, the writer was Tom McRae, who did part one. Uh, he wrote another Doctor Who story, but it's quite a while before you get to it. It's it's a long way away yeah um i quite like him even though the there was a clash between certain parts of the production in terms of direction and writing not being on the same page i do actually really enjoy the way he constructs stories and writes characters even if it's quite cheesy Mm. um obviously he's not perfect but yeah overall i i do like tom mccraser right i think he's He's got it, you know, he, he gets it. Yeah. He gets the show. You know what? I reckon this episode would have been so much cooler if if the age rating for the show was a bit bit higher and they oh, were yeah, allowed yeah. to do more things. Well, in England, they have kind of similar to us, but there's like 15, like, is closer to an R than it is to yeah, an yeah, M. Yeah, yeah. And 
or it's 14, one of those yeah. like tween ages. And Dalek, specifically by itself, because of the amount of like mass murder, yeah. got that rating. Right. So if they were able to... And just, Tooth and Claw yeah. got it as well for like the horror scenes. Yeah. yeah. So if they were able to push it just a little bit further yeah. to be a bit more like I mean there is some grotesque imagery but again it's very comic book yeah. and very big whereas yeah. if they were able to show the more personal aspects of like there's a couple moments where they delve into it like with Sally who really, like she was talking about her hu- her fiance yeah. and that's really sad but to go into like the horror elements of it the horror yeah. side of the there is, is there is a big Finnish audio story called Spare Parts mm. where you literally hear you know chainsaws cutting up body parts and stuff it's very violent yeah um that's cool something like that on tv would not be broadcastable but it would be awesome yeah well that's the thing like if i were to change this episode in any way it would be drop the comic book bullshit like fuck all that make make the make the whole like visual process of becoming a cyberman way more prevalent than just the like fucking nice and shit going like 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 silhouetted seeing some dude being cut apart and put into a side man. Have you seen the original Robocop? Oh no, I've only seen the one that came out recently. Well it's kinda of similar thing. Yeah. But you well actually that's a good example of that. You do you care about Don't So care. in this Robocop remake there's a scene where they show him what's left of his body underneath yeah. the robot suit and they take it all away. It's his head, his spine, his lungs and his hand. Yeah. That's all mm. that's there. If they had that kind of process yeah. Exactly, yeah. It, it, you, you know, know you know what also because there was a lot of parallels between this and Darth Vader what if it was like the end of Revenge of the Sith when they're showing his body being built you know what I mean yeah what if they did yeah. something similar to that I just, and then you could have the similar thing with the sound yeah the I just wish there was a whole tone shift in this I wish it was a horror yeah not yeah. a like a sci because it's a sci-fi it's yeah. a decent and fun sci-fi but it would have been pushed over that line to a better story had it been a horror. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I agree with that. Okay. Um, music. Mm. Murray Gold. He blended the Cyberman theme that I showed you from part one. But he did so many different versions of it in this episode. Where, it, like, there was one when they were walking through the tunnel where it was on piano. Yeah. Um, and I love how he progressively builds it up to this big bombastic bit at the end. Yeah. It's almost like the entire episode has this swelling atmosphere with the music. Yeah. I love it. Yes, I agree. I didn't totally. notice it as, as much. I don't think I was... Re- I think I was more trying to just like... Focus on this plot. On the it's plot very and much the story. in the background. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really... I only noticed it th- on this viewing. Right. And I've seen this episode quite a few times. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yes. the track we're going to be listening to is not actually from this episode because the only track from this story that was on the the cd was uh the cyberman theme from part one yeah so we are going to be listening to march of the cybermen by malcolm clark and it's from a 1980s story called earth shock mm. oh, yeah. um so obviously with the 60s clip you saw, you got a bit of the 60s cyberman theme and you've gotten the new who cyberman theme here so now you're going to get the 80s one
Yeah. So how was that, Jake? It's pretty pretty cool. That whole piece of music plays at the end of part one to that story. Oh yeah. And you like no one like so the Cybermen at that point hadn't been seen in about eight years mm. and no one knew it was coming. Oh. And then at the very end they appear. Shit. So that whole song builds up to that point. Yep. Do you reckon did did they like kind of preface it with that stomping sound? Yeah. Mm. Um, I would say so, but I don't think they really stomped in classic. Who no, did they? Was, no, they didn't. That was just the music. Yeah. Um, but what I, I love about that track is it just sounds like, in like distantly, like just clanking metal. Yeah. Just like something is being built. Yeah. And then it gets louder and louder and louder as it gets closer to completion, getting closer to being done and closer to you, yeah. the listener. It's a very sort of foreboding. Yeah, and then it sort of drops when. On the scene where we actually do see the Cybermen, yeah. it drops. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure at some point we'll probably... I might throw in that clip at some point, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Depends where it's applicable. Um, but yeah, what did, what did you think? What do you think of it? Because you've only, you've only heard a couple of Classic Who themes so far. Mm. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty interesting. Like, the um, the synths and stuff sound a lot... A lot less cleaner than they do in the in the music by Murray Gold, but that's just yeah. yeah. Technology. I I do want to at some point probably go more into this, but I'll quickly ask you. There are some classic Who fans that don't like Murray Gold's music, oh, yeah. and it's because they prefer incidental music over themes. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Incidental meaning meaning like music that's so made by watching this it. that much of the Sidemen song. Yeah, is specifically made for that scene. For that scene, yeah. um, and I it's think... not something that you could sell CDs with. Whereas Murray Gold stuff, whilst I love it, I can see why someone would think it invades a story. Yeah, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely, I would say, preference, um, and also what lends itself to the story better. Because yeah. um, mm. especially I... with thing stuff in um, this Doctor Who series themes work better because it's a lot more um like like the th- the the themes of the stories and the writing and everything is it, it it references old stuff and old emotions and things that have have happened not necessarily literally have happened yeah, but yeah. like like rose's theme was played at the end of this episode which was referencing yeah, exactly. other scenes where that song song was and, played. I, I, and that that makes it easier to know what you should be feeling in that scene yeah whereas, because you're listening and it's, and it's also yeah it's also like it's hard to explain but it just helps create this sort of continuity mm. this sort of thematic continuity yeah literally thematic in terms of also the music, but it saves money yes True. Which yeah. will ultimately, I reckon, be the main reason why yeah. it's done like that. Whether I like it more or not, I don't really know. Because um, the um, classic Who music, uh, there's exceptions, but it tends to be what are we going to do with the music in this moment? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. thing you can, f- the thing that incidental music can also, it can be worse because it can force an emotion in a scene. Right, that's that, like well, incongruous. And yeah, right. Because yeah. some people think that's what Murray Gold's music does. Well, that's that is exactly the same thing. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. That's why I'm, or, it, like, it, it goes both ways. You know, like, obviously, music that is a theme has made a theme because it's trying to trying to convey a certain emotion yeah. of it's that written, character. It's written for a character, or, yeah. or a monster, or, yeah. or or a place, as opposed to be. Written for, the, written for the scene yeah and the so story it might not always fit with the scene though it may fit with the character yeah. in that scene yeah I mean that's just when you make a new theme and it's 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 a, it's a tough one because I can see where they're coming from but the problem is because the, sto- the a lot of the stories I actually do like I actually do feel that emotion going into the music and yeah. then the music itself pulses it to a point where it's more than honestly I, th- I think I think like it's really a matter of of not whether one's better or not it's it's whether it's whether it's like you can't say incidental music is the best for everything no matter what yeah because yeah. it's not 
No. There's no way it is. There's a reason why Darth Vader's theme works so well yeah. in Empire Strikes because, Back. Because it was like, yeah, it's... You but the thing is, that's not even Darth Vader's theme. It's mm. the Empire's that's theme. True, yeah. yeah. Every time you hear so that... synonymous with him. Mm. That's the same thing. Every time you hear that sound, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. it's a theme. These dudes rolling in. Um... Yeah, that's an interesting conversation because there's a lot of there's a lot of divisive opinions. That's on a thing that can be made into a whole video. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Anyway, short short answer for that yeah. is that um, neither is better. Right. What is it time for now, Jake? Um. Uh, trivia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you always disappoint me with that. This episode of Doctor Who: The Age of Steel was the first episode I ever saw. As a really? kid. Really? Yep. That's some good trivia. I watched it when it aired in 2006. You must have been so confused. No. Oh. No, I paid attention only to the Doctor, though. All right. And so, and I think that for a lot of young children, that's a way to go, really. Yeah. You're like, that's the Doctor, so I'm going to watch him. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I I was like, that funny man with the glasses doing those maths, that's pretty cool yeah <laughs> but yeah it's a, it's strange that I started on a part two mm. yeah yeah it's bizarre but I mean you wouldn't have known but and it's funny because I because what got me into watching this show regularly was re-watching this episode again so I saw it in 2006 and then two years later I came I was living with Luke yeah and I came downstairs and he was watching this episode and oh, I was yeah. like I recognise I'm like I've seen that before yeah it's so strange I've got a real sort of personal connection with it really but strange because I don't have that with part one right it's really weird yeah it's weird weird thing um but yeah I always the imagery of this episode always sticks in my mind because of that yeah because when you're a child what you remember most is how you feel and what you see mm. yeah um but it's funny because I don't really remember the Cybermen from the story that well I just remember the doctor and the atmosphere Mm. and the the num because obviously yeah, when I was young the side men I was just like that's the baddie I had no you know idea what's yeah. going on but yeah it's an interesting one to start on I think um because it's very much in the middle of a, a series and it's like the end of Mickey and it's weird isn't it yeah um but I was extremely captivated by the 10th Doctor as a kid mm. so yeah um other stories saw the use of emotion to kill the Cybermen in the past. Right. Um, except I don't think it was the same because I don't think the emotional inhibitor was really a thing until this story, was it? No. The emotional inhibitor, I think, is specific to the parallel universe Cybermen. Yeah. Um, the Doctor had previously had a conversation with a Cyber leader in re regarding emotions in Earthshock. I think he says something like... Um, well prepared meal. What was the line? Oh, shit, I can't remember. Um, oh, God, I can't remember. It was something along the lines of um, he was talking to a side man saying like, "Oh, would, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to have a well prepared meal?" You know, like, saying basically human things. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Senses and whatnot. It's one of Davison's like only iconic scenes. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I'm um, Lumix expression of excellent is a reference to the off-key rendition of the word that the Cybermen have used in previous stories. So in the 80s, the Cybermen used to all the time say, excellent. <laughs> like, it was like their catchphrase. Yeah. Um, and then... That's, yeah, he actually kind of has a similar voice to them as well, because they yeah. all had kind of booming voices. And personality. He's yeah. almost like he has the personality of a Cyberman before he's converted. Mm. Yeah. Um, but there's like a compilation on YouTube of Cybermen saying excellent. <laughs> and then recently we were watching one of the worst of Classic Who ones and they tried to plant that catchphrase on another on another, on another alien and it just doesn't work. No. It's like, no, don't do that. That's the Cybermen. Um, upon learning about the emotional inhibitors, the Doctor says to Mrs. Moore, so that's her name, uh, do I have that right? This echoes the same line said by the fourth Doctor oh. when he is faced with the prospect of des destroying the Daleks in Genesis of the Daleks. So, yeah, that's a whole thing, thing that we'll probably get into at some point. I'm sure. Um, 
After forming the plan to infiltrate the Cybus conversion factory, the Doctor says that they will attack from above, between, below, echoing the words used in the nursery rhyme by the second Doctor in the five Doctors to determine the locations of the entrances to the tomb of Rassilor. Oh, that's right, yes! yes. Uh, the marching of thousands of mind-controlled Londoners to Battersea, re- ref- referred to by the Doctor as Sheep, echoes the Pink Floyd song Sheep from their album Animals, where their sheep are led into the Valley of Steel to be slaughtered. Huh. Uh, the album also features a shot of the Battersea power station on its cover, which a pig, pig floating above it, just like Lunik's own airship. Pink Floyd is also known for incorporating the Doctor Who theme music into their live performances of the song One of These Days. Huh. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny, eh? Uh, according to an interview with Andrew Hayden Smith and comments given by Russell T Davies in a pre- press conference, Ricky and Jake were initially intended to be gay and lovers. A deleted scene included in the Complete Series 2 DVD box set confirms this, but a hint to the storyline remains in Jake's volatile response to the news of Ricky's death. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like something Russell would do. Yeah. Um, in the original script, the emotive Cyberman euthanized by the Doctor was an 11-year-old boy. Oh, shit. That, see, I was talking about making it more horrific. <laughs> so stuff like that. Yeah, that would have been yeah. really sad. Because um, then that would have, like, Lou, uh, whatever her name was, Sally, as sad as that was, to really bring in the do I have the right question, yeah. is putting down a child. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and visually, because it would have been smaller, yeah, would have been like a lot more painful. Um, in the original script, Rose killed the Cybermanized Jackie. Again, <laughs> shit. Should have stayed in. Um, in this episode, Lumic is upgraded to Cyber Controller. Roger Lloyd Pack, who plays Lumic in human form, actually provided the controller's voice along with Nick Briggs. Uh, listen carefully and you'll be able to tell the difference between the voices. Lumix controller's voice sounds more human in terms of tone. Yeah, there... I could... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so Nick Briggs does the voice of the Cybermen and the Daleks. Yeah. Um, and you with the controller, it was both the, both of them speaking. What was... There was a, I mean, I didn't say it when we were watching it because I was just listening. But I... He said something and I was like, oh, he's voicing this... Dude, well, as a Cyberman. Uh, delete, run after them when nah. he pulls the tubes out. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Can't remember. Um, the climax of the episode echoes that of Casablanca, which is a film from 1942 with Humphrey Bogart. Um, Humphrey? <laughs> Maltese Falcon, Sam Spade. <laughs> Hello, darling. What would you like me to do for you? Um, <laughs> with Mickey in the role of Rick Blaine and Rose as um, I'll... I think it's... I can't Elsa. say. Elsa Lund. Indeed, Mickey adopts the name Ricky and talks about freeing Paris. Oh, yeah. Oh. Viewership. So, this is interesting. Because The Rise of the Sidemen got over 9 million, I believe. Mm-hmm. This one got 6.8, which is 30% down. Was mm. it exploding a on? I don't know. Maybe people didn't like episode one. I mean, uh, yeah. part one. Because part one got a lot of views because it's the return of the Cybermen. Yeah. So there is a slight chance that people might have been turned off by it. Because the Cybermen didn't show up until the very end. Yeah, and also some people didn't like them. Yeah. Like, compared to Classic Who. Yeah. So there is a chance that that may have happened and people just switched off. Maybe. But then again, there may have also been a sporting event. But mm. yeah, that is an interesting statistic. It's one yeah. of the biggest deviations between part one and part two I've ever seen. No. Well. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in this. Jake, you go first. Give your conclusion and rating out of 10 for The Age of Steel. Sure. My so conclusion is um, that as a part two, it was good. And it, it wrapped it up all nicely. And the um, story was solid. Characters were good. It was a bit flat, a little bit, a little bit melodramatic at points. Um, it was enjoyable. I enjoyed it, and I thought, I thought, the the look and feel and the whole atmosphere of of the episode and the world they're in was really cool. 
it being very cool and dark and um, mechanic, mechanical. Um, and I liked, I liked the, I liked the whole idea of them being rebels in in a world of uh, robots and then destroying everything. And also that final shot of um, the cyber controller of him falling, falling down. Yeah, it's very dramatic. And then him just disappearing into flames. Um, overall, I thought it was a good, a good episode and a, and a good part two. And I'm gonna give it a six point five out of ten. Yeah, fair enough. So half point below part one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to go? Yeah, you go second. Um, basically the same. It's very entertaining, and I have a deep nostalgic fondness for it because of how much this episode fucked me up as a child. Um. <laughs> But actually, it's it's good, but it's really nothing special. The direction is superb. The writing is very entertaining, very well paced. It's just that it feels a bit too much like a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. It doesn't feel it has real no, enough. It has no flair to it, eh? No, it doesn't... F- it do- it, there's... N- Nothing particularly stand out about it. Yeah. It, it's just like, oh, okay, they, there's the Cybermen and there's these underdog heroes and then there's the main villain, the man in the suit who gets turned into one of his own monsters. Yeah. It's good. Nothing special. It's not one I rewatch particularly often. I've only seen it probably about five or six times overall in all the... Because there's a few episodes that I skip, not necessarily because I dislike them, just because I'm like, I don't have time and I want to watch a better one. Um, this is one of them usually this two-parter really I thought you said you loved this two-parter uh, I did when I was younger but having rewatched it recently like because I watched it at probably Nove- after you, the September when, right. the, when, when the part one came out I rewatched it I didn't especially part one as well I didn't latch onto it as much as I used to mm. which I thought you said you had the same thing with School Reunion actually yeah yeah Series 2, yeah, <laughs> mm. yes, um, it's good, it is very, very good, it's very, it's very watchable, but it's not one that incites, like, any emotion from me, I'm just kind of watching it, like, cool production design, cool direction, mm. decent script, it's fun. The Doctor's doing his rambly bit. Mickey's getting to be a bit of a hero. There's an interesting dynamic between Pete and Rose. Mm. And that's it. it, it, it there's, yeah, as you said, there's no real flair. There's not that hook. There's not that yeah. thing that raises this up from being kind of just a generic run-around explosion yeah. action story. Well, that's um, the thing that I found about it is like... Sorry to interrupt, no, 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 but like, like... If you watch this, it feels like you've watched it before. Yes. On in something else, yeah. but if you watch something, say like um, I can't remember the episode names. I suck with names, but the one with the "Where's my mummy?" Oh yeah, yeah, the <laughs> Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. Yeah. yeah, the one that you bashed. The one that I bashed. <laughs> now, now in saying that, the thing about that is that it's a very that's a very unique story. Yes. Whereas yes. you've never no, never really seen that before, but yeah, yeah. for this, this is sort of just like. Well, this is a story that's been done before. It's just got a little bit of Doctor Who sprinkled into it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, you could replace the Cyberman with any generic villain, yeah. monster. And it would... For most of it, it'd be pretty much the same. Um, there's nothing particularly special about it. Yeah. I do enjoy it. But it's not a hugely rewatchable one for me anymore. So I'm probably going to just give it a 7 out of 10. Hmm good but not I'm noticing a pattern with some of these episodes actually with um because similar to School Reunion you said this very similar things where you enjoyed it but weren't captivated and you said that it was one that you used to love but don't anymore yeah whereas I still love this story somehow (laughs) and it might just be because it was my first ever one that's absolutely fair enough but I just find it's so interesting like I know we had a whole debate about it but like I still love the side men in it and it's that's the big difference for me is it's all those small moments in it that 
change it from being a good episode to one that I really love. And um, especially because there is so much that is built up to this story with the characters where i am always got the, the previous episodes in my mind. So when things come together in this episode, it all clicks, um, especially with Mickey's story. I, I really like that side of it. And I, you'll, you, you'll notice with this, with some episodes, I have this real soft spot for ridiculous comic book Doctor Who stories. Um, and we haven't had too many of them yet. No. But there's a couple where I truly, genuinely love them just because they're just something that I love to watch. Doctor Who can be goofy and should be goofy. It shouldn't yeah. all just be dark and miserable. Yeah, of course. Like we want it. To. Yeah. Um, but it, <laughs> yeah. Like it, it needs to have that balance of creative stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I yeah. really get um, that. There are definitely better Sidemen stories, better stories, better... Like, it's... Look, it's not the great... I'm not saying it's an all-time classic or anything, but I just really, really, really enjoy it every time I watch it. And I, and I think... Graham Harper's direction is one of the things that really pushes it over the edge for me, especially with all the scenes like in the tunnels and just the overall parallel universe atmosphere. And I think also because it's a two-parter, um, this caps off a whole bunch of stuff that was set up in part one, and I think it does it really well. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a nine, wow. which is the same as what I gave part one, because I actually think... It's a really, really solid story. Yeah. I, I think it's a solid and a story. Lot of, and a lot of the nitpicks that you have with it are parts that I actually enjoy. Mm. So I really can't put it lower than that because of that, and also because it was my first ever episode. Yeah, so of course, of nostalgia, course. nostalgia, nostalgia. Um, defined. Um, right, so now we get to the comments. Um, I think this is from The Parting of the Ways. Uh, nice to get this reaction so quick after the last one. And so we come to the end of the Ninth Doctor's tenure. Regeneration is such an accepted part of the series nowadays that we all tend to forget what a bonkers idea it was when they initially did it. By all rights, it should have failed. The reason it succeeded due almost entirely to the enormous charm of Patrick Troughton's version of the Time Lord. And then when Pertwee took over, he wasn't just replacing Troughton, the whole series format was being radically changed. And Tom Baker had to take over while Pertwee was still at the height of his popularity and the format was changing again. And um, Davison one of the most, uh, had to replace Baker, who was one of the most popular Doctors after an epic seven-year run. And then Colin Baker had to not only replace Davison, but cope with the show going to hour-long episodes and moving to a different night of the week. Uh, McCoy took over while the show was in serious trouble. Uh, it seems every new Doctor had a major challenge to overcome to be in the accepted role. Um, and David Tennant had to introduce the concept of regeneration to a whole new generation of fans who weren't familiar with the classic series. Um, and in now in the present day, we're going through the same thing again with uh, moving to a different night of the week um, and also with having a female doctor. The more Time Lords change, the more things stay the same. Yes. And that comment was quite a while ago now because it was... Off Parting the Ways came out, which was mm. so long ago. Um, Who was it by? A Who BP8. Oh, yeah. One of our regulars. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Regeneration is one of the biggest challenges of this show. And the fact that it's succeeded for the most part, I think is fantastic. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Regeneration is so fucking unique mm. and so creative yeah. And it's just brilliant because it also it's the reason the show's still around because it can cons constantly not just change the character a little bit and renew the personality but the whole show with it. Like the vibe of the show even between series 1 and series 2 same showrunner mm. mostly the same supporting cast same composer same this that and the other thing mm. but with them writing a new Doctor and having cast David Tennant it's shifted into a sort of more romantic kind of, you know, less of a, less of what series one was in terms of adventure and more in terms of like a, it, it, it seems to focus on a completely different market. Yeah. Even though it was definitely. like everyone watched it. I definitely think that this series 
shifts slightly more to the general public as opposed to series one which was an unknown entity so they sort of Russell just sort of did what he thought was gonna work and it did and it did fuck yeah it did um but yeah at this point though because we're sort of halfway through the series but how are you are you adjusted to the new doctor yet yep yeah I'd say so yeah. um yeah, I mean, the tone's not really that much different from Christopher Eccleston. He's definitely still a little bit of, like, a melancholy feel to the Doctor. Mm. But, um... I think if you look at that last scene, though... It's in terms the of... Way he, re- the way he responds to the villain is so different to Eccleston. Oh, yeah. And also the way he responds to Rose and the other characters that yeah. he's met before. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. um... It's it's interesting when doctors change, especially ones that are polar opposite. To, yeah, um, that's when the most interesting changes happen. Five and happen. six, yeah. Yeah, and um, and that's when you like a lot of fans tend to get upset. Yes, the change is so sudden. Yeah, and so massive. Um, they're like, nah, fuck off. Yeah. That's probably why they went to David Tennant next because it's not a massive polar shift. Yeah, a, a Shakespearean trained actor who yeah. does a lot of theatre work and has a big personality, very charming. Yeah. There are a lot of parallels, yeah. Mm. And quite northern. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one comes from Mail Dude. Just marathoned your whole reactions and I'm loving the structure of your review. Keep on doing what you're doing because there definitely is an audience and I'll be sure to share your future reactions. Just one question, though. Are you going to react to the mini so Born Again? We did already. Man, that's a while ago, that yeah, comment. Um, yeah, so we did that. Um, and all, and we got one from Paul Morris, who is the, the the guy who gives us a whole bunch of trivia. We from, love like, Paul Morris. Because he's old and, you know, oh. he's, been, he's been around. No, you're, you're not old in my eyes, Paul. <laughs> yes. Uh, just good to see some appreciation of Billy Piper's performances, which is often overshadowed by Eccleston in Series One reviews. That's because Eccleston is 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 a di- is a whole different ball game. He's brilliant, um, and so is Billy Piper. Uh, Piper has gone on to have a very successful career, both on screen and perhaps even more surprisingly on stage, where she wa- has won a number of awards for her stage performances. All in all, a tremendous progression from her teen pop star days, which, to be fair, were also amazingly successful. Yep. She's fantastic. Mm. Um, so, I wrote this down. Um, along with Father's Day, I regard this as one of the most underrated stories of New Who. I also think it's very un- misunderstood, and I do think it's harsh to judge a parallel universe version based on the original. Does this story deserve my praise, or, or is it full of issues like people say? Stand by. <laughs> um, that's a subjective question. Um, yes, it deserves your praise because for what you want it to be, it is, and like that's fine. Yeah. Um, I can see your your point of view on it, and I can see why you enjoy it so much. Um, for me, no, I don't, I don't see eye to eye with how you see it. And it's, I think it's simply one because you would have watched it younger. And so you would have experienced things and emotions and like, um, found things scarier than I probably find. Like, I, I I definitely will not find anything that a (laughs) 10 year old you, you find scary now. So for me, for me, it's just, it's too gimmicky. And it's not, it's not as, and I can, the problem is that I can see how good this, this story would be. Right. If it were done in a different tone. Mm. Yeah. And, and also adding to that, because you're saying like, just based on the phrasing of that, referring to a lot of people who criticize this episode about the Cybermen because they're not like the classic Cybermen. This is coming from someone who's other than that 30 seconds oh, yeah. has never seen the yeah. classic yeah thing. exactly so this is from an yeah, objective they're almost story two, point. they're almost two completely different things yeah. really yeah so so also in saying that to other people that will say that about the, this side man 
there's no point comparing an old thing to a new thing because it's always going to be different. And not only that, yeah. it's, it's it's not saying this is the same thing. Yeah. Just evol- it's not even like in the same content. It is the continuity, but it's not like this is the same species as the one you saw before, but evolved. This is a whole new one in a different world doing its own thing with its own rules. Yeah. yeah. It's a fresh plate. Yeah. Um, but then again, I can see how people would find it not as appealing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Of, yeah. So everyone, everyone yeah. is justified in their opinion. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I, I can see why someone wouldn't like this version of the Cybermen. I'm just saying that when you can, when you say it's because they're different. Yeah, that's bad. That's I don't, I don't think that's a very good yeah. reason. Um, yeah. It's best to try and be objective about these things. Yeah. Right. What would you like to see next time, Jake? So we've lost Mickey. Yep. So what do you want now? Um, I feel like there's a new companion on the horizon. Is there? Well, to be fair, in this, um, in this point in series one, we lost Adam and gained Jack. Who the hell's Jack? Huh? Who the hell's... Oh, Jack! Jack. Oh, fuck! How did you forget about Captain Jack? (laughs) I forgot about him. Um. Yeah, because it it was the long game, and then we had Father's Day, and then we got Jack and the Empty Child. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Yeah, maybe a new companion. Yeah. Maybe that's what I want to see. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, next time we're going to be watching The Idiot's Lantern. Sweet. Do I do that as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>